Good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me? I usually, uh, when I do a speech, and you guys that heard me before, you say that I usually don't ask for people to have a pen and paper. But in this case, uh, I am actually uh, going uh, to give you uh, a special uh, technique to interpret your dreams. So uh, pen and paper, in this case here, it's not a very uh, bad idea. So you ask uh, Luigi or <laughs> <laughs> Ana Lucia if you guys want it. If, if you don't want it, it's fine. If you have a good memory, it's all good. Uh, no problem. So uh, the first question we have it tonight is, have you ever thought about why do we dream? Okay, because that's a very important question, don't you think so? Yeah. Uh, because, first of all, nothing exists for no reason. If you look in nature, everything that exists in nature, uh, there is a reason for this. So, why do we have cockroaches? We need them. Okay, yes. Uh, why do we have the trees? Uh, why do we have certain plants? Uh, why do we have the sun? Why do we have the moon? Why? There is a why for everything. And if you think about it, the dreams, we basically sleep to one third of our lives. And if we don't sleep, okay, we can die from it. There is one thing that every culture knows, and this used to, uh, in a war, they use that as a punisher, is to keep a person awake. And then if they're not awake, because they can get sick, and it's a very painful uh, situation for them. Every um, problems that we have um, as when we're talking about mental health, one of the things that everybody knows about it is how important sleep is for the person that has uh, uh, mental issues. So sleep is a very important part of our health. And while we sleep, something usually happens, and we call them dreams. So let's talk about this guy, Carl Jung. You guys know him? Okay. I'm sure you do. Um, this guy, it's a very amazing person. Uh, I've been studying him for a while. Um, I'm a psychoanalyst myself, but uh, when I went to school, I did the Freud um, version of it. And, uh, and then, of course, you know Jung through the studies, but um, when you go deep on this guy, you, actually, I was amazed with his teaching on everything, but there is one thing that he specializes in, and it's dreams, okay? He is a genius, let me tell you this. First of all, um, he was a psychiatrist, and uh, he... Um, he got his degree around the 1900s, and uh, he starts to work at the, at the hospital in Switzerland, and um, he met Freud through letters at first, 
they were exchanging letters. He was amazed by the work that Freud was doing. He was much younger than Freud. Uh, and then one day, they decided to meet each other. And it was, I get fascinated by when I hear this. The first conversation that they had, the both of them, was for eight hours in a row. Imagine, two brilliant minds talking about something. And they had so much to share, there's so much to talk, that they talked for eight hours. So, th and I'm thinking, hmm, I wish I could be there. <laughs> anyway, just to, <laughs> just to hear what they were saying. Um, and then, uh, but Freud was also impressed with Jung. Um, around 1910, he made Jung the president of the Psychoanalysis Association in the world. So that means that how much he saw uh, on Jung. And uh, around uh, 1912, one of uh, Freud's disciples, his name was Adler, he was, he decided that he, did, he didn't want to leave Freud. He thought of, a, no, I don't, you know what? You cannot explain everything by Freud theory. And uh, Jung was just, okay. But then he realized that Adler became um, a very successful therapist also, uh, psychoanalysis, let's say it this way. And uh, he came up with a theory that for Jung made a lot of sense too. So when Freud explained that everything about was the energy that came to sexuality, everything for Freud, he would explain that way, you know? Uh, it was more sexual uh, to him, the, the power that we have through our sexuality. And uh, when Adler left, he said that no, uh, he came up with a theory that, okay, uh, we have a problem of uh, inferiority and superiority. And those complex are a problem. So we can explain things that people sometimes feel inferior to each other, and sometimes they feel superior to each other. Each way is a problem. And if you feel superior, you actually feel inferior too. But those are two complex that Adler uh, treat his uh, patients very successful. So Young was looking, wow, so look how smart he was. He thought, how come that a person can be treated successful either by Freud or Adler? What is that what is that, that is making a difference? And he realized that, that that was the personality. The personality of the psychoanalysis was the one that was making the whole difference between the treatment being successful or not. It then when he realized that he started to study and he came up with the personality uh, types. Jung can have also a personality uh, types because he wanted to understand the personality because it looks like the personality made a huge difference on how uh, they help the patients. So he started uh, to do this. And by, te by, by 1917, he left Freud also because he started to think that on his own, that a lot of stuff of uh, Freud, he said, Vida, can you ask them to move? Uh, that a lot of stuff that, um, that they would talk, that Freud was talking about, also did not make sense to Jung. And he was explaining completely different. And one of the things was the dreams. Like to Freud, the dream was, well, we cannot go deep on Freud therapy, but let's put it this way. To Freud, the, the dreams is something that you repress on you. So you repress about, not eating chocolate, you're gonna dream about chocolate. You know, stop everything that you repress, it comes up uh, in a dream. What Jung did was completely different. He 
thought, no, okay, that could be for some case, but the dreams are so much more than this. And a little bit of history for him is that what amazed me was that the, his dad was a pastor and his mom was in contact with spiritism. Mm -hmm. So pastor and spiritism, that was his uh, influence uh, on life. He even uh, studied a medium uh, that was his cousin uh, and he studied a lot of case uh, of hers. So he had an open mind. He was a spiritual uh, person, and Freud was more of the materialist kind of guy. So they didn't, you know, they didn't actually get along in that contest. They're still friends, but uh, after they broke up, uh, that he actually separated from Freud for good, Carl Jung was in a depression for four years, and uh, he went uh, to his own a house on a country in Switzerland, and he was there. Guess what he was doing for four years? He studied his own dreams. For four years, he was studying his own dream. And something amazing happened there. Uh, he started to dream about a lot of uh, dark places, a lot of... Uh, uh, dark dreams, and he, he journals everything. We're going to talk about how important it is for you to write your dreams. But he will write in every single detail. And he thought that he was having this dream, these dreams, because he was depressed about the, the problem that they have with Freud. He loved Freud. You know, it's hard for you to get out of your mentor, you know, and just uh, be on your own. But he, he, he ended up like that all the dreams that he had was related to the first war one, to the first war. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he understood later that was like, wow, I was dreaming about the world war. And this is uh, one of the things. Another thing is that he did was years later, now, this guy will love to collect dreams. Like he would travel to here, United States, and be with the Native Americans. So he can learn how the Native Americans saw dreams. He, think about this, he came here to United States to uh, go in a psychiatry hospital to see if the American people that had psychosis he ain't not, had the same dream of the ones that, that were in Europe. He wanted to observe, to see. Look at that. Look at the work that this guy did. He went to Africa. One, he went everywhere looking for dreams. Not only dreams, but to see how the people saw dreams and how important a uh, dream was. And um, he has like so many dreams, uh, history that he talks about it, that, that it was right in a point. And one of the things that you see him talk in one, one of his interview is the fact that he had patients from all over the world. And he actually, uh, saw, saw it by dreams, Hitler coming from analyzing the dreams from his Germany customers, patients. So he said, right before, they would say, okay, the dreams are very similar. Something is going to happen in German. And then Hitler, you know, came in and we know what happened. Uh, he saw through dreams that he collected everywhere, that he went to study and went to discuss with people all over the world, he also uh, realized that the Second World War was going to happen through dreams. So uh, dreams, it's very, very important. So let's go see really quick 
um, just a quick video. It was an audio from one of his books. Once, Once one, one has seen the vital importance, that is, that is the healing or destructive impact, impact, impact of the symbol produced by the unconscious, by the unconscious there, remains there remains the difficult, the difficult problem, problem of interpretation. Of interpretation. Dr. Young has shown, shown that everything, everything depends, depends on whether any particular, any particular interpretation, interpretation clicks, clicks and is meaningful, and is meaningful to, the to the individual concerned. concerned. In this way, in this way he, has he has indicated the possible meaning and function, and function of dream, dream symbolism. symbolism. But in the but development, in the development of, Jung's of Jung's theory, this possibility raises another question. Another question. What is the what purpose, is the purpose of, the total of the total dream life of the individual? What role what do role dreams, dreams play, play, not only in the immediate psychic economy of the human being, but in his life as a whole? By observing, By observing a great, a great many, people many people and studying, and studying their, dreams, their dreams, Jung discovered, Jung discovered not, only that not only that all dreams are relevant to varying degrees to the life of the life dreamer, dreamer, but that they but are, that they all, are parts all parts of one great web, web of psychological, of psychological factors. factors. He also he found that on the whole, they seem to follow, follow an arrangement, an arrangement of pattern. pattern. This pattern, this pattern Jung called the process, the process of individuation. Since dreams produce different scenes and images every night, every night people, people who are not who are careful, careful observers, observers will probably be unaware of any pattern. pattern. But if one, but if one watches one's own dreams, dreams over a period of years, years and studies, studies the entire, the entire sequence, sequence, one will one see will that see certain that contents, contents emerge, emerge, disappear, and then, and then turn, up, turn again. up again. Many people Many even people dream repeatedly of the same figures, figures landscapes, landscapes, or situations. situations. And if one and follows, if one follows these, these, the whole, whole series, series, one will see that they change, change slowly, slowly, slowly but, perceptibly. but perceptibly. These changes, these changes can be accelerated, accelerated if the dreamer's conscious attitude that is influenced by appropriate, appropriate interpretation, interpretation of the dreams, dreams and, their and their symbolic, symbolic contents. contents. Thus our Thus dream our life creates a meandering, meandering pattern which individual strands or tendencies, tendencies become visible, visible then vanish, vanish, then return, then return again. again. If one if watches, one watches this meandering, meandering design, design over a long period, period of time, time, one can observe a sort of certain regulating or directing tendency at work, at work creating, creating a slow, slow imperceptible, imperceptible process, process of psychic, psychic growth, growth, the process, the process of individuation. Of individuation. Gradually, a wider, a wider and more, and more mature, mature personality, personality emerges, emerges, and by degrees, and by degrees becomes, becomes effective, effective and even visible, visible to others. To others. The fact the that fact we often that we speak of arrested, of arrested development, development shows that we assume that, assume that such a process, that process of growth, of growth and maturation, and maturation is, possible is possible with every individual. individual. Since this Since psychic, psychic growth cannot be cannot brought about by a conscious effort of willpower, power, but happens happen involuntarily, involuntarily and naturally, naturally, it is in dreams dream frequently symbolized, symbolized by, the by the tree, whose slow, slow powerful, powerful, involuntary, involuntary growth fulfills, fulfills a definite, a definite pattern. pattern. The organizing, the organizing center, center from which the regulatory effect, effect stems, stems seems to be a sort of nuclear, nuclear atom, atom in our psychic, our psychic system. system. One could also One could call it the inventor, organizer, and source of dream images. Jung called this center, center the, self, the self and described, and described it, as it as the totality of the whole psyche, whole psyche in order in to order distinguish, distinguish it from the ego, which constitutes, which constitutes only a small, small part of part the total psyche. Total psyche. The self the can self be defined as an inner guiding factor, factor that, is that is different from the conscious, from the conscious personality, personality and that can be grasped, grasped only through the investigation of one's own dream. dreams. These show it to be the regulating center that brings about a constant extension and maturing of the personality. But this, but larger, this larger, more nearly, more nearly total, total aspect of the psyche, of the psyche appears, appears first as nearly an inborn possibility. possibility. It may emerge, it may emerge very, very slightly, slightly or it may develop, develop relatively completely, completely during, one's, during one's, lifetime. one's lifetime. How far, How far it, develops it develops depends on whether or not the ego is willing to listen to, listen to the message of the message of the self. The self. Okay, you can cut it, Stephen. Okay, good. Uh, so what is this that Jung had in common with spiritism? When you hear him talking, you can, you can say that individualization process is the growing, exactly like spiritism, is your growing. So Jung thought that the person is here and they can actually go to the process of individualization, which is spiritual growth. And yes, you can grow. And guess what is the number one <laughs> key for you to grow, dreams, okay? Why? When you study the unconscious mind, you realize that the first thing I can, I always said that unconscious is unconsciousness. So you have to realize this. 
You have no idea. That's why we call unconsciousness. And it's 90% of you, it's unconsciousness. So um, this is one of, I got it from one of his books that said the dream is a natural phenomenon, is the not spring from a special intention. One cannot explain it with a psychological taking from consciousness. Please remember that. We are dealing with a particular way of functioning independent of the human ego's wills and wish, intention or aim. So when we say that it's unconsciousness, it's because it's unconsciousness. And uh, we all know this. Have you ever thought, how can we communicate to the unconsciousness? Oh, God, if we're 90% unconsciousness, how do we communicate consciousness to the unconsciousness? How do we do that? Okay? And Jung said the dream is the number one tool to do that. It's through dreams that you actually realize what's going on on your unconscious mind. Okay? So to Jung, the dream, it's like, um, let's put it this way. It's a very important message coming from the unconscious mind. Very important. It's like you have a hint. Like a bridge. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, it's like a bridge, but it's a messenger. The dreams are trying to tell you something. Now, Yonara, it's so hard to interpret dreams. Every I get it. Every time. Every dream. Every dream. According to in to Jung, every single dream that you have, every single one of them, it has something for you on that dream. Okay? So, uh, it's, it's, it's work. Yes, it is. But think about that. And me and Luigi, we have the habit, it's been so a while since we do this. Um, we drink coffee and we talk the first thing over a cup of coffee, we discuss our dreams, okay? And uh, because it's uh, very important, and Luigi used to say to me, I don't get it. Why is it so difficult? Come on, just tell me what it is. <laughs> just tell me, you know? Tell me what it is. You don't have to do this. And uh, what, what Jung said is that, first of all, dreams communicate to symbols. That's the language of the universe, okay? And uh, number two, what Jung mentioned is this. Think about it if you see a book that was written in Japanese. And then you don't get the, the book and say, oh, there is nothing good here on this text because it's in Japanese, right? We don't know how to speak Japanese. And if we don't know how to speak Japanese, we can read the text in Japanese. So if we don't know the language of the dreams, then we won't be able to solve it. We won't be able to get it. So yes, we need to exercise these wonderful tools and that uh, we need to research, okay? And we will uh, talk about this. So Jung says, every dream brings us a new information. To repeat his exact word, every dreams bring a new information about us. Now, how awesome that is. Then you say, oh my God, that's why I dream. It has to be a reason. And look how perfect this universe is. So God gives you hint to your dreams. And it's, it's communicating with you through your dreams. That is good. So um, let's go for a few things. When you're going to interpret a dream, there's a couple of things that you should take it under consideration. Number one, choose an interpretation that shows you something you didn't know already. Okay? So 
If, it, if in, the, in your interpretation comes out as something that you already know, you're going to go, uh oh, that's not it. Why, guys? Why? It will be consciousness. So why do we dream? Because the unconscious mind is trying to tell us something, right? If we already know, why are we dreaming about this? So it's never, ever, okay, about something that you already know, okay? Number two, avoid the interpretation that inflates your ego or it's self-congratulatory. <laughs> avoid that. The consciousness are not, the unconscious are not interested in that and give you a little good no, okay? It walks through what it considers to be a problem, okay? So it doesn't do that. So be careful with that interpretation. Number three, avoid interpretation that shift responsibility away from yourself. It's always about you. Even if you see, we're going to talk about this. There is differences. But, like for an example, every time we have this thing, right? I say, oh, I dream of a snake. And I'm going to be betrayed. Yeah. You never think that if you dream of a snake, you're going to betray someone. <laughs> you're always thinking about the other person that is going to betray you, yes. Mm -hmm. You know something important, but then this distraction around we will, your mind goes to the distraction. We will talk about this, how, how what you call distraction can mean something. Okay? All right. So, a nub and number three, number four, learn to live with the dreams over time. You may get more insights into a dream down the road. So, take your time. Okay? So, uh, if you don't understand the first dream, one num number one rule for dream, if the dreams repeat, who has here ever had dreams that it's always repeat? Oh my gosh, the unconscious mind is screaming at you. <laughs> it's screaming. And the, something fantastic happens. When you realize why, the dream stops. Completely, it stops. Okay? So the repetitive dreams are something that they're really trying to get your attention. So there is something that very valuable to you uh, right there. Okay, other things to take under consideration. This is how we do. We take our dreams and we turn our dreams into a movie. Okay, that's very important. The first thing we have to realize in a dream is, is the place, the time if we can, and the persons that are there, okay? So when you write it down, you said, okay, I dream that I went to the mall and then I was going to buy a shoe and I went with a friend of mine, okay? And then for some reason I couldn't find the shoe and I was desperate and none of the shoes fit me. Uh, and then I was with my friend uh, all the time and I left uh, the shopping center. <laughs> yeah. So I I went up and uh, and I left the dreams and and I left the sh the the mall without getting my shoes. So the dream has kind of like a movie, and you have to realize how is the movie ending, okay? Because that is all so important. You have to realize to the beginning, and then you will have a illustration of the problem. So you will have a problem on that dream. Every dream comes with a problem. And then the illustration of the transformation, which can also leave room for catastrophe. Catastrophes can happen in dreams, right? So uh, think about a fairy tale, uh, for an example, the stories of uh, fairy tale. Uh, it always has uh, a person and then it has what the problem is in this dream that I told you, what was the problem? Okay, the problem is that I couldn't find the shoes. And then what was the illustration to the transformation? What happened in that I got desperate because none of the shoes uh, um, helped me, fit me. 
And then the last one is the result of the dream, a meaningful closure, compensation, illustration of the action of the dreams. So you will put this together, okay? So what are the persons that was in my dream, the places that was in my dream, uh, stuff uh, like this. Okay, first thing we need to know, we need to do, and this is really serious, you need a dream journal. If you really want to do this, get a dream journal. A dream journal is just a notebook, okay? You don't have to go and buy this. Um, <laughs> you can just use a notebook, okay? Use a notebook. Um, and it's very, very important to write it in the morning because you are not going to remember. By the afternoon, the details of the dreams fades away and then you don't remember. But it, when you wake up, you have your dream journal next to your bed, you get the dream journal and then you start to put it, to write it every single details of your dreams, okay? Even if you don't want and you don't have time to interpret that dream that day, just write it down and then go back to it, okay? All right, so, uh, and this makes, a huge difference because when you start to write in your dream in the morning, right after your dream, it's so amazing how you can bring yourself back to the dream, to the details that, that you needed. Okay. Second step, you have to identify the type of dreams that you have. There was a few types. Number one, perspective. Perspective dreams is when it's an amazing to have this kind of dreams. Because this kind of dream is like this. You will struggle with something, and then you struggle, you struggle, you struggle, and then you dream, and then it comes a solution for your problem, okay? It happens. Uh, you see a lot of people, especially people that are uh, trying to invent something. It's very common to have a prospective dreams. They wake up and they go, aha, this is it, I got it, okay? But it's only one type of dreams, okay? Now, when you see that every dream has a message, you might say to me, Yonara, but you know what? Yesterday, I watch a movie and I dream about the movie. That has no meaning. Of course, of course it does. Your subconscious minds are using the image of the dream to tell you something, okay? It doesn't influence the dream. The unconscious mind tells you the dreams. Now, and then everybody has, okay, some kind of a dreams that they're really embarrassed about it, you know? Like you see like, oh, like I had a person uh, asking me the other day, oh my God, I was having dreams, you know, with my best friend and uh, it's not uh, uh, <laughs> a dream that I should, what's going on? I was like, listen, the first thing you have to, understand is that strong images gets your attention and it works. So if the dream gives you a message that it's strong, you're going to remember and that's what they, they it wanted to catch your attention. That's it. So we might use images that are very, very not okay for us, we are embarrassed about it. Sometimes we have dreams that we are killing another person or the, uh, the other person is killing us, violence. We have, you know, all kinds of, uh, of uh, dreams. Those are to get our, our attention, okay? So this is a wonderful type of dream to have. Another dream, this is according to you, is traumatic, how this happens. If you've been to a trauma, and uh, let's see for an example. Now, let's give the example of war, soldiers that dreams of the war. How can you identify a traumatic uh, dream? It will be exactly what happened. You will be duplicating that dream. For let's see for an example, if, you, uh, uh, if you've been sexual abused, for an example, and you will dream about the exact same scenario over and over again. 
And if you were a soldier in war, you would dream about exactly the same explosion. That explosion that actually you were there when, happen when that happens. And then you keep dreaming about that over and over again. Now, with Jung uh, works, he explained that like the conscious mind is trying to make sense of such a traumatic event. And it's trying to digest that. That's why it's bringing to you through, uh, through, through dreams. And in that case, if you know anybody that has those type of dreams, it's very important for them to talk about their dreams, okay? And to try to realize uh, what's going on. And um, Jung had many and many successful working with soldiers that stopped to have those kind of dreams. Eventually, when the conscience thought that was okay, now they can deal with that, with that scene. They can deal with the, with the situation. They don't have to dream anymore, okay? So uh, we have to take that under consideration too. Now the other one is prophetic. This happens to a lot of us. It's rare, but it happens, okay? I had an experience with this one day. Um, I dream that a person that I knew um, was, um, was getting divorced. So he actually told me, the person told me, Yonara, I'm getting divorced. When that happens, I had the pleasure of a company uh, of uh, Dijal Margolo, which is also a specialist on dreams. And um, we were writing a card and I told him, listen, can you help me interpret this dream? And uh, I was like, I dream, he knows the person that I was mentioned to him. He goes, oh, you know, you might dream this and my, you might make this, this, this. So we talk about it a little bit. And then two days after I receive a mess, uh, Facebook message of the person say, Yonara, I'm getting divorced. <laughs> so uh, Dijalma was here, so I mentioned to him, and he was like, there you go, Yonara, that's a perfect, uh, perfect dream. So it's a perfect example of that, okay? Now, you have to be very careful because you don't want to think that every single dream that you have is telling you the future because it's not a, uh, a thing. It happens sometimes. And you have to make sure, you have to write it down, you have to uh, make sure that this is the case, okay? This is a rare dream though. It doesn't happen all the time, okay? It does not happen all the, all the time. Another one is the spiritual dream that we as a spiritist talks, and Jung also talks about this. That's what I like about Jung, is that he also understands that the, there is experience that we dreams could be from a spiritual uh, world. So how does that happen? How do you know that this is a dream that comes from the spiritual world? Well, usually the people that are in your dreams are people that you know and pass, and they talk to you, okay? What's the difference? It's so clear their image that you have no doubts. When that happens, you actually had an encounter with that person. Now, the spiritist has a problem here. They think that every single dream that they have is related to the spiritual world, and it's not. Like, they might say, oh, I dream about this guy that was chasing me, and um, he had like this black thing that he was dressed on and he was running after me, that must be an obsessor. Not really, okay? Not really, okay? Because when you dream about somebody chasing you, could be uh, so many things. Uh, and you have to take that under consideration. But if you dream about somebody that's only, that it's any other side, then it's a spiritual experience, okay? So you have to analyze. Andrea Luis talks about that. 
in one of his book, he says that uh, this granddaughter, this is the importance of dream analysis according to Andrea Luis, this, um, this young girl, um, something was going to happen to her and that the grandmother of her wanted to tell her, hey, be careful with this situation. It's going to hurt you. So in their dreams, they took her out of her uh, body and that the grandmother said, listen, honey, be careful with this. Don't do this on every uh, single thing. So he, she went back to the body. Andrea Luis asked his mentor, is she going to remember that? And Andrea Luis said, not really. What, he's going, what she's going to remember is that, that she has a dream and there was a snake. And then he put all the symbols that it means exactly the same thing that it was your grandmother is telling you. And then he explained that how difficult it is uh, to us. This leaving the body and come back to the body, uh, it's not an easy process. And we have to filter that information when we go to the spiritual world. And then what it comes uh, sometimes are symbols, okay? So, okay. According to Jung, this is the most um, important, not, not important, but the most uh, current dream that we might have. It's called compensation. Jung, uh, Jung talks about a very good example that he was helping this patient. And this woman was so snob, like she thought she was the thing. She was talk to Jung, you know, like that. And every single person that Jung helped as a psychoanalysis, he analyzed the dreams. So the woman, oh, I had a dream. And she goes, yeah, go ahead. So I was invited to this party, and I went to this party. And then the person that opens the door to me says, oh, welcome. Let me take you to your friends. And then they go to a room, and they open the door. Here you go. This is your friend. They're all animals. <laughs> <laughs> they were all animals. <laughs> so what is this dream was trying to tell you that person? <coughs> OK? So what, what an important message for her, right? They said, this, this is your friend. OK. You're more like a <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're just like them. Uh, so uh, take that under consideration. Um, another dreams of compensation, uh, Jung gives an example that he was helping this other lady, and the lady was very smart. But then after a few sections, he thought that the section wasn't, it was very, Imagine do a section with this guy, right? He thought it was mm, not so deep, you know, the section. So he started to make a uh, judgment over the lady. I said, oh, you know, I don't think this lady is capable of doing this, you know. And he started to. And then the day before he was going to see her, the next week he had a dream. And in this dream, he was um, inside of... Um, of a building, and then he look outside and he see this huge woman, and he goes, "What's that?" And then he goes up there and he look at the window, and he had to do this to see her. This is how big she was. And then he woke up, so he said, "Oh, I got it. In my dreams, she was showing so big to compensate the idea that I was having of her that I used that I put her so small." So in his next section, he talked to her, and he tells her the dreams, saying, listen, you know, I think we, and then the section went so much deeper than before because he knew what was going on, okay? This is the most uh, common one, okay? So uh, usually, uh, this is it. If you look at, at the dream, it's not spiritual. Uh, it's not something that's come up from my idea. It's not prophetic because it doesn't tell you the future. It's compensation, okay? 
and it's the best dream ever to have because it will uh, tell you a few things that you need to hear if you want to hear. Uh, the next thing we have to do is the interpretation. Which interpretation are we going to choose for? Objective or subjective? Okay. This objective. If you see a person in your dreams and you see her or him as a photographer, the image is so perfect. Okay? When this happens, when you have no doubt because you see the person, it looks like you actually seen the person. When that happens, it means something about the person or the relationship that you have with that person. Okay? Now, if you see a person but it's subjected. I mean, you know how sometimes you dream and the face is like fading? Mm -hmm. It's not very clear. Or sometimes you, we might dream like this. You know, it was Cynthia, but it didn't have Cynthia's face. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Have we dreamed like that? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the image is kind of blurry. And we were like, is, is it you? Or the person is acting... Uh, it's not unclear and the person is not acting like the person that you dream of. Okay, that's a big red flag. We have to go from subject interpretation on that. It's not objective mo anymore. You go to subjective, okay? Now it comes the problem. When you go to subject, you have to understand the meaning of the psychic. Okay, so when you go to subject, okay, you go to, okay, when you see a person, let's see for an example, you see a person, the person's not clear, it's not something clear, I'm just mentioning the person because you're going to have to analyze every single details of your dreams. Um, Jung believed that we are the self here at the center, like he said the, in the video. We have a shadow. Shadow is the problems that we cannot see it. Our, you know, our own shadow, something that is within us, but we cannot see it. And then we have the ego. And then we have the persona. And then we have the anima animals. Those are the five most important things that we have to identify in the dream if the dream is subjective, okay? And if it's a compensation dream. What is the persona? The persona is the mask that you put it to society. And you might ask, Yonara, why we need a mask? mask? We need it. We can never, ever relate to each other if we don't have the persona. The problem is when you take that person and then you think it's you. That's a problem, okay? But the persona we need because I need to function in my life. And let's see, for an example, that I have a problem in a fight with uh, Luigi before we I came here. And uh, I'm not happy. He's not happy. We have to put a persona to be here. It's none of your guys' business, right? So we have to put the persona, so we can socialize with each other. So imagine that you're having trouble at home. How are you going to go to work if you don't put a persona? Do you understand why we need it? We need it, but we cannot think that we are the persona. And sometimes we beat ourselves so much for this persona. I, you know, it's all masks. It's all this. I'm one person at center, and I'm a completely different person at work, and then I'm a completely, who am I? You know, those are not, those are the personas. Okay, the personas is driving your life. Okay, so they exist, but you have to notice them. You have to have consciousness of them. When you have consciousness of them, they're okay. You know what you're doing. Okay? Now, the second one, the second part is the ego. The ego is different from a persona because the ego is who we think we are, general. Okay? So it's what we think we are. 
Uh, and it's more general. It's not like the persona. In one situation, I'm going to act like this. And then in a different situation, I'm going to act like this. No. The ego is the idea that you think that you know who you are. Okay? Most people live their lives through ego and persona. And then the self is the real you. It's the uh, divine force that it's in you. It's the personality that when it comes to individualization is the one that guides you. It's divine, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. But it's right there at the center. We have to listen to it. And then we have the shadow. And one of the very important components of dreams, according to Jung, is the anima animals, okay? The anima animals, animals is your energy, is your feminine and your masculine energy, okay? So I might have a dream about Raphael there, and then it's blurry. It's not really Raphael. I couldn't really see his detail. I think it was Raphael, so it's subjective. Now I have to, the first thing I have to discover is that if Raphael represents my masculine side, my masculine energy, okay? Because we need a balance of this energy according to Jung. Your feminine side and your masculine side. And sometimes having the feminine side on a man that are so tough and so brave, they need this. Because how do, we, how, how do you connect the anima and the animals? Well, the anima, the feminine energy, are energy that it's more related to emotions. And sometimes men don't want to feel that emotion, right? And then they dream about a person that it's the opposite sex of them. But what the dream is trying to tell you is something about their feminine energy. Did you guys get it? Yeah? And the uh, animals also in woman. We need to balance that energy. We are feminine, but we need to balance this. So our dreams, when we go either way, we need to have this imbalance. We might have dreams that it's calling us. It's telling us that we need a balance between the, these energies, okay? All right, so another thing we have to take the under is, and we also, of course, have the consciousness, the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. Unfortunately, with the time, I can't go over everything, but you have to take under the consideration. Now, how do I recognize the ego in my dreams when it's subjective? You guys didn't ask that question. <laughs> right? The, the egos can be, now, Jung hated the word rules because to him it was like so difficult to put rules on this. But he said, okay, sometimes, most of the times, okay, the ego is represented by you on a dream, by you. Like you see you, it could be uh, the, ego, the ego, or it might be the, the transportation that you dream is. Are you dreaming that you were in a car? Were you alone in a, in a car? Were you with somebody else? Did you dream about a boat? You were in the boat? Did you dream about an airplane? Of any type of transportation, okay? It might be, just a hint, related to the ego. Now, if it's a public transportation, it might have something, because we do have dreams about that, right? I'm in a bus with a bunch of people, it was not only me. That means more like a, a problem in the ego that it's kind of like in a society, like everybody kind of have that. So it's interpreted that as a society problem, but you are included in that too. So you're not dreaming that uh, for uh, no reason. When we dream about water, the water, it's very common to the water 
that it, it means the unconscious mind, okay? But it's not a rule. Please remember that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, and please do not answer, okay? Do not answer. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Do not answer. Answer to yourself. Have you ever dreamed that you were flying? Don't answer, okay? That you were flying? Okay. According to Jung, one of the few dreams that you can actually go in and say, this means that, is the flying dream, okay? The flying dreams means, that's what, don't answer. The flying means, means that you are completely out of ground. <laughs> like you are so into ego, okay? <laughs> that's why I ask you not to, not to answer, because people will say, oh, I dream. I say, no, no, don't answer, you know? <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, I know, but what it usually, what it usually means, it's like you out of the reality, the way you pers you see the world, okay, the way you perspective is like, come to the ground, okay, come to the ground, you are all the way there in the air, come back to earth, okay, come back to earth. And then there was a dream that it's even when you dream that you were on the airplane and the airplane was going to have an accident, okay? Uh, a few people uh, will dream that. Um, that is the inflation of the ego, okay? And that it's... Um, <laughs> the falling has a, a different meaning. The psychic read, but again, let's not go there because then you guys are going to want recipe for dreams and that's <laughs> not the case. You have to, one thing that Jung always said is when somebody told you a dream, say, what do you think it is? The first thing he would say, I have no idea what this dream means. <laughs> that's what Jung says because we really don't. And you have to analyze, he has, even though the person tells you a dream, you cannot know what's inside of her. And, and we're going to um, uh, talk about this. So how do we see shadow in the dreams? Okay. How do we see shadow as something, usually something that you cannot see? You no, know, like I was trying to see something, but I didn't actually see it right. Have you ever had this dream? That's showing you this, your shadow. Okay. So you have to relate the emotions uh, to that. And um, also, uh, a shadow as a projection. Have we, you, we guys study about that, right? We see something that I don't like in Leonardo, and then I don't like it. Remember that? Same thing happens to dreams. So if I dream a person that I don't like, and the image is not crystal clear, that means that I'm projecting myself and that person. And the shadow that she has, it's right inside me. And the unconscious mind is telling you, watch out for you. You have that. Okay? You have that. So, um, and then, how do we see the persona on a dream? Usually the persona uh, is the way you dress, what kind of clothes you're wearing when you dream, or what kind of clothing. That's the details I'm telling you, okay? If you don't have clothing, uh, if you don't have clothing it has a different meaning, but then you have to go for it. <laughs> but think about the, the persona as a clothing, and being naked, it's also a way to accept a persona, okay? So if you dream about being naked, it has to do with persona. If you dream about when you see, wow, I saw uh, Rafael in my dream and he was wearing this red suit, this, 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 that all makes sense, 
okay? There's all details on the dreams that the unconscious minds are trying to tell you uh, something. So the persona, it's related to little details, something that you wear and the other person is wearing. If you notice that on your dreams, it's something, okay? All right, now, very important, amplification and association. This is what you're going to realize that don't, you will never going to ask me anymore what your dream means. Because according to Jung, what you have to do is take the amplification and association. You have to do that. But if you think, if, if Leonardo thinks about a snake, what a snake means to him is completely different than what a snake means to me. So that's why Jung hated those dream dictionary. It doesn't exist because each, don't go online. It's not that easy. Oh, I dream about this. What does this mean? They will give you an answer, okay? But that doesn't mean that this is what you're looking for because when, let's see for an example that uh, this guy dream about a table. It was a funny dream that I have. I dream about a table. And then you ask that person, what comes to your mind about a table? What do you think of? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. When you see a table, and then the person might say to you, oh, you know, a table to me means uh, my father, he always used to sit on a table with me, and he always, after that sitting, we're sitting together, I was always punishing. I was always punished. So that is the meaning of the table for that person. Now, if I ask Patricia the meaning of the table, she was going to give me a completely different answer. Okay? So you have to relate the thing to you. What comes to your mind about that thing? And then you're going to say, what do you think of? It's going to stop you. If you can't find anything, you're going to ask, what do you feel when you saw that table? Because it's also a hint. Okay? And then uh, you're going to say, okay, next step. What comes to your mind? Let's see for an example that fear represent, that table represents fear. And then you're going to ask, what comes to your mind about, you're going to substitute here for the word fear. When it comes about fear, then that you have a right now related to your life, okay? And most important thing, connect the dream images to your inner dynamics. It's about you, okay? So let me tell you a dream and we're gonna interpret this dream together, okay? So this woman dreams that she was in her backyard the backyard when she was a child. This was her house. And then it starts to rain. And it rained really hard. And, um, and then her mother appeared, very clear, photographic uh, image of, of her, okay? And she came with the guy, and the guy that she didn't know. And they both saved her put inside of a boat, and left. Okay? You guys got the dream? Okay. So put a nice dream. So let's go for the interpretation of what we need to do. First step, backyard. And she, what? So the question that we need to ask a person or we can ask ourselves is, what do you think of this? What it means to you, this background? And she said, childhood. That was the lady what the lady answered. Okay. And that, um, the other thing, okay, you saw childhood. How can you relate your childhood problems with your problem with your life right now? And it says, I have relationship problems. Okay. So what happens next to the dream? Rain. The rain is also a symbol. So that's why you're never going to ask what the rain is. So what do you mean? What is a feel? 
when what the, the rain means to you. She said, difficult times. The rain might not mean complete, something completely different for you, right? And, uh, and then she said, and how can you relate these difficult times to your life? She said, when I was a child, when it rained, I had so many leaks on the roof, and it was so sad because I used to be like, it was a very uncomfortable situation because if we had like buckets all over the house and uh, we couldn't fix uh, the leak of the house, okay? So who appears on her dreams? Her mother. It was clear? So that means that it was, on the same dream, sometimes you can have both, objected and subjected, okay? So, objected because her mother was uh, clear, she knew it was her mother, and, uh, and then she realized, what does this dream mean? And she responds, the relationship with my mother, okay? And, uh, and what about the man? The man was subjective. She doesn't, when you dream about somebody that you don't know, it's subjective. You have to take it under consideration other things. And then the man was animal, an animus. What is the animus? Yeah. The masculine energy that was uh, inside of her. So, okay, Stephen. Oh gosh, okay, something when. Okay, so we got this, all right, good. And, um, yeah, <laughs> think about that, all right. <laughs> all right, the last thing was the boat. S oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Look at me, the barco means boat, people, sorry. So, uh, that means that I actually work on this graphic. Anyway, <laughs> so the boat was, um, what did it remind you of the boat? And she said, good moments. Good moments when? Uh, in my childhood, because we used to have a boat. And then the, the most wonderful time that I remember from my childhood is when we went out on a boat. And then was the best time ever. So boat reminds her of good moments. And they say, how can you relate this time with your situation today? And she say, I miss having good times with my mother. So you guys good? Yeah. So let's do this. How to interpret this dream. Come on, guys, you can do this. So we have childhood, relationship problems, difficult times. This is what we see in the link. You see the story is no longer now there anymore. This is what matters now. The story, it's gone. So we have childhood, relationship problems, difficult time leaking the roof, a relationship with the mother, uh, animals, energy, good moment, missing having a good time with her mother. What is the unconscious mind was trying to tell her? It's a very, it's a very simple message. Look, listen. Yeah. What she was trying to tell her was this, listen, you had difficult time with your mother since when, you know, you were a child, but you need to fix it. Why does she need to fix it? Because she was in a boat. The boat means what? Good times. So the question is how can you have good times with your mother? And the answer is this. Use your animus energy more than your anima. Don't be so emotional. Don't be so emotional. Use your reason to talk to her. So anything that she say hurts you. Interesting, right? So what you need to do is to get along with your mom you need to use more of your masculine inner, your rational side. Rationize. Don't be so emotion about the things. Get it? All right. That's easy, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Now look at this. Uh, let's hear. Let's hear the master that we are here tonight talk about one of his dream interpretation. That's him, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. Because it's also the archetype that I, I, I didn't I, I, have. I, I, a case, a case that was an intelligent, intelligent uh, uh, young, woman. young woman. She was, she a, was a, a student of philosophy. philosophy. Very good, Very good mind. mind. Where one could, could expect could easily, easily that you would that see that I am not the, the, the parental authority. But she was utterly unable to, to get out of this delusion. Uh, and in such, in such a case, one, uh, one always has recourse to the dreams. One, it is just as if one would ask the unconscious, now what do you say to such a condition? You see, she says in her conscious, of course, I know you are not my father, but I just feel like that. It is like that. It, 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 I depend upon you. And, uh, and I say, now you see what the unconscious says. Now the unconscious produced dreams in, in which I really assume the very first role. You know, she was the little infant. She was sitting on my knees. I held her in my arms. I was a very tender father to the little girl, you know, and, uh, 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 and more and more her dreams became emphatic in that respect, namely that I was a, a sort of child and uh, she is a very little frail human uh, thing, you know, and uh, uh, quite a little girl in the hands of an enormous being. Uh, uh, and, and the last the dream last of that series was, was, I cannot tell you all the dreams, yes, yes. Was, was that, that I, I uh, uh, it was out in nature. in nature, I stood, I stood in a field, field of, of wheat, wheat, in an old field, field of wheat, wheat that was ripe, ripe for house. And I was a child. And I held her in my arm, arm like a baby. Like a baby. And the wind, the wind was, was blowing over that field of wheat. Now you know when the wind is blowing over wheat field, these waves, the wheat field, and with these waves I swayed like that, uh, uh, putting her as if it were to sleep, you know. And she, feel, she felt uh, as being in the arms of, the, of a god, of, 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 of the godhead. Uh, so uh, now, now, the, now the, the harvest is ripe, yes. and I, I must tell her. And I told her, uh, you, see, you see, what you, what want, you want, want, want and what you what project, project into, into me, because you are not you conscious, are not conscious, conscious of, it, of it, is, is, is you, uh, you, you, have you have the idea, the idea of a deity. Deity is divine. You don't you possess. Don't possess. Therefore, Therefore, you see it in me. Uh, that click, that click. She, she certainly, certainly became, became aware, aware of an entirely heathenish uh, image, image. Yes. Uh, uh, that comes that fresh from, from the archetype. archetype. She, had she had not the, not the idea of a idea Christian of God, God uh, or of an uh, Old, Old Testament Yahweh. Yahweh. Uh, uh, it was a heathenish God, God. you see, a, a, a God of nature, of vegetation. He was the wheat himself, he is the spirit of the wheat. The, uh, the spirit of the wind, and she and was she in was the arms, arms of that human. human. No. No. Now, no. that is the living experience of an archetype. Now, that made a tremendous impression upon that girl, and instantly it clicked. She saw what she really was missing, that missing value, that, that was was in the form of a projection in myself and made myself indispensable to her. Yes. And then she saw it is not indispensable because it is, as the dream says, she is in the arms of uh, that uh, archetypal uh, idea. Now that is a luminous experience, you see. And, and that is the thing that uh, people are looking for. Yes. The, an archetypal experience, experience. That, that, that gives them, them uh, 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 an incorruptible value. value. You see, they, they depend upon other conditions, conditions. they depend upon desi their, their desires, desires, their ambitions, uh, depend, depend upon, upon other people, people. Be 
because they have no value in themselves. They have nothing in themselves. They are only rational. And, and, and they are not in the possession of a treasure that would make them independent. But when that girl can hold that experience, then she doesn't depend anymore. She cannot depend anymore because that value is in herself. And, and, and that is a sort of liberation. Yeah. And that is, of course, uh, makes her complete, you know. Uh, in as much as she can realize such a luminous experience, she is able to continue her path, her way, her individuation. The acorn can become an oak and, and, and not a donkey. <laughs> So, uh, if one thing that you know when this works, when you actually realize what the dream message is, is how, you, how are you going to know if it's wrong or not? But one of the things is that when you hit that dream and you know exactly what it means, it comes a sensation on you and it's like, wow, and that really changes you. That really does. Because I have been through this experience. I had many dreams, but I had a few, especially one that I'm talking about tonight, that it made so much sense that I was like, wow, this is it. This is it. This is what it means. So you get the, the feeling of completion. Like this girl, she was projecting on him the image of God, you know? And she was under the impression that she could not live without him. How many times we do that to people? We take their, uh, they don't see the, the, their own value and they project the value on others. It can be a religion person, a friend, or anybody else. And then you have to realize, and when the dream, isn't it wonderful the dream is telling you, no. You don't need this. And then when you realize she was a completely different person. So dreams are wonderful tools, guys. And I hope that if you start doing a journal, one thing that he mentioned, series of dreams, we have to take that under consideration too. Write one dream one day, the next dream the next day, and then you put the chapters together. You're gonna see the wonderful message that your unconscious is trying to tell you just to help you develop your individualization, just to help you grow, just to help you to become a better person. Isn't it that wonderful? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.